way of dealing with the hardships of life and the uncertainties of life. There's another nice question from uh, George uh, Dold uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, as a proclaimed Darwinist, he says, um, I'm, I'm occupied by the question how mankind can influence ev evolution itself, mm -hmm. themselves, <laughs> by themselves. Sarah, would that be possible? Well, I, mankind is influence, influencing evolution. Um, evolution is still taking place, but but we are artificially selecting things by um, giving people uh, drugs to cure diseases. Mm -hmm. People are now no longer dying of certain illnesses, which they would have done, and they're living long enough to reproduce now. So, so quite we a lot are of it is on, in our own yeah. hands. Well. It's different, as we were discussing earlier. It's different now because, for example, if somebody has cancer now, they can have chemo or radiotherapy, and if their bodies can cope with this incredibly grueling, incredibly unpleasant <coughs> um, method of getting rid of the cancer, then they can survive. But they've got to have the bone marrow to be able to withstand this. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to say that we're getting rid of selection. We are getting rid of elements of natural selection probably but there is still a selection there what do you think yeah we're doing strange things i mean that um, we, we're keeping lots of people alive that nature would kill and and, and keep them alive much longer than than even our bodies would uh, or, or, or designed for so so we're interfering on even the most uh, infertile people still can have their own children now can have their own children well well there's probably a reason why they are infertile and so, so you could really go on thinking about that. Uh, about what, what strikes me that, that was one of the points that we of our debate uh, earlier was that uh, that now we have the possibility of raising many children and we don't do it. Now, now that we have, we are in this comfortable situation that we could, in principle, raise ten kids on average per family without uh, without running too too much trouble. And now we, we get stuck with two of them, and that's that's really is, that's a biological paradox which is partly to do, of course, with the fact that we live in a very comfortable but very difficult uh, society. We have to learn a lot to be able to function properly in this society, but still, too, is so little in, in, in the view of the biological dogma of, of reproduction, reproduction, and reproduction. So we are changing it. And what, and what about evolution in nature? I mean, we're talking about human, uh, humans now. What, what about the evolution in nature? Is there a way to influence that? Yeah, we have, of course, we, we, we are getting rid of uh, things that we don't like. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are getting even rid of things that we don't know that exist because of the influences we have on, uh, on, on the environment. We have such a dramatic change in the environment for many other species that not every other species will be able to adapt to our presence and our pressure. So this is mostly damaging, would you say? <laughs> not for all species, because for some species, like the chicken, for I always use the example of it as, as a chicken, to, to, to illustrate, for, in my opinion, the chicken is the most successful bird in the world because it's everywhere now and it originates from a very narrow uh, zone close to the Himalaya in, in the Asian, uh, on the Asian continent but through domestication by man it has expanded all over the world and then there are many, 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 many chickens and there will ever, as long as humans are there, many, many, many chickens so chicken is the most successful bird in the world the question is, would the chicken approve of its status as, as being something used by humans to eat to be considered successful. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting philosophical question that we, we would be able to, we would be able to discuss with chickens to have an answer yeah. on. But but still, you see that some species do very good as uh, being human followers. The question is, is that good for nature? I don't think so. But 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 we are there as an established uh, high pressure on the system. So it's, we have to try and control as much as possible the influence we have on, on whales, for example. Like that. There's another personal question for you, Sarah. <coughs> uh, that probably have seen it on the webcam that you brought your children, Leo and Josh, yeah. six and four. Um, there's this, I think it's a lady. Uh, where's the question? She wants to know, uh, well, do the children like it on board? And how are they being educated during the trip? Well, the children love it on board. They have uh, 62 adults to talk to. <laughs> and they and do all the time. Many of these, and they do a lot all the time. Many of these adults have their own children who they're not with at the moment. So I think my kids are being utterly spoiled, frankly, yeah. um, with all this attention. Everybody's incredibly nice to them. And yes, we do. We've been given schoolwork from uh, their school. And um, in the mornings, they sit down and they do 
about an hour of English and an hour of maths. Okay. In, the, in between talking to everybody. In between talking to everybody, yes. Yeah. There's, there's not a, a, a strong obligation to go to school in England, is there? Um, the headmistress is the one who makes the decision. Okay. And if she feels that you're going to do the appropriate thing. I mean, don't forget, they are six and four. They're not coming up to no, no. major exams right. or anything. Right. But if she feels that you're going to do the appropriate amount of work with them, um, which we have been, and we, when they go back to school again, they take their work with them and the teachers check it. Okay. Then they're happy with it. I mean, they're learning so much. They're seeing whales, dolphins, swallowtail gulls. You know, we're going to show them the stars tonight. You know, that is what a fantastic education, a fantastic experience. Best school ever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, you couldn't you couldn't say that they. It would be difficult for them to learn more, I think, in a classroom. I'm if, sure. If I'm appropriately sure. treated. I'm sure they uh, they agree at the Delft Montessori School, where the children are watching your magnificent journey with interest and a little envy. Yes, oh. uh, <laughs> So that's yes. nice. So it's nice. But how did you feel on board, actually? Because uh, Darwin was quite sick all the time, and he was actually he hated to see, right? He, he wanted just to get off, and he was also because maybe he was a geologist. But how do you feel when when you were here on board? Do you feel Darwin, or do you feel the Darwin experience, or are you just waiting to get off? Oh, I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm, I don't get seasick, so that's wonderful. Do you get seasick? I take pills to make sure. That uh, the whole time? No, 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 oh. not now, not this week. No, it's I mean, it's, it's wonderful, and, and I mean, it is a bit of a Darwin experience sailing to Galapagos. It's I keep saying, we're sailing to Galapagos, so I wonder what we'll see, you know, it is, this is the way to do it. I mean, it's just an incredible experience. But maybe, uh, let me, let me uh, add something to Laura's question, and there's a question of Rick also. Uh, you boarded this Beagle project both as a direct descendant, descendant of Charles Darwin as a biologist, and although both are related, in which role do you experience this trip the most? Um, well, it's very difficult to say which is which is stronger. I mean, I, I'm definitely getting to know my great great grandfather. Um, so is by it being on the boat and revisit, it's a bit like a sort of crime scene investigation. Uh -huh. You're going to the place, you're seeing where he was, and then you're trying to sort of extrapolate from that what he must have felt. Exploration of the so family history. So there is a little bit of that. I mean, I'm not ever going to be in a situation where I start calling him great great grandpa. You know, he's always going to be Charles Darwin because I never knew anybody who knew him. Oh. So the funny thing you told me that the, that the Charles Darwin never was an issue in your family. No, not really. No. I mean, if you have such a famous, uh, famous uh, ancestor, uh, why, well, why, why don't you talk about it? Then? Um, we just never, we just never really did, actually. Okay. Uh, we really. How, never did. how old were you when you realized it? I was well. Uh, I, I think the, some penny dropped of some sort when uh, I was around six, and somebody asked me, knowing absolutely. But asked me where my family is from, and I, I said that we, uh, I thought about it for quite some time, and I said I think we must be from Australia because I know there's a place in Australia called Darwin. Mm -hmm. So, and they looked very surprised at that answer, and of course went back into my grandparents and started laughing, and I was, like, why are you laughing? Why is that funny? You had a little doubt about uh, diving into this heritage before starting this trip. Yeah. You had to load the Darwin. On your Not shoulder. so much the load of the Darwin on the shoulder, but I think it's very, you know, you've got to be very, uh, there. there's always another person in the audience who knows more about Darwin than I do, so you have to be very <laughs> careful of your facts. I'm, I'm always try to be very careful of my Darwin uh -huh, facts. Uh -huh. Because everybody's watching you. Because everybody is watching, and I, I'm afraid I do the same when, I, when I'm with Darwin family members and they start coming up with something that's maybe not quite right. I'm sitting there thinking, it doesn't sound very good. <laughs> so you have to be careful. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Eimuiden in Holland. Uh, an environmental question. Uh, mankind is exhausted.